Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Newark and Sherwood series, a district of 84 civil parishes right in the centre of Nottinghamshire. Come with me as we delve into one of them. Welcome back to Newark and Sherwood, everyone. It's November now. It's cold and flu season and I've got a bit of a sniffle so hopefully you can understand what I'm saying in this episode. We're beginning this one at Thorpe Close Play Park. Nice little place to park here as well because it's kind of right at the end of the route. Nice circular route around this village. Should take me no more than about an hour and a half. This is the parish of Coddington. This Newark and Sherwood video is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Coddington sits some three miles to the east of Newark along the old route of the A17 and right next to the A1. A modest sized village, this one can be split into two distinct parts. There's a western part which is much newer, having been developed in the last few decades, and a much older eastern part which contains the church, a chapel, the school and two pubs. The Doomsday Book calls the area now known as Coddington Cotter or Codder's Farm. By 1597, land records referred to the village as Coddington spelt with a Y. In about 1320, quarrying was very important here. Stone from Coddington was used to build Newark Castle. In later times, Coddington had a plethora of windmills, having had at least three in its time. One of these, Coddington Mill, which was a tower mill dating from 1859, was damaged in 1944 by a landmine during World War II. It lay derelict between 1947 and 1983 until it was converted into a house. In the late 19th century, a man named James Thorpe owned much property in the village. He lived at Coddington Hall and he died in 1902, but not before he'd left his mark on the place. Coddington also has a medieval moated site located off Bolton Lane, almost directly opposite the site of some civil war defences, both of which are on private land and we can't get to. There's lots we can get to though, so let's go and check it all out. We start on Thorpe Close, a residential area to the village's east, where there's the first of the village's two playgrounds. The name Thorpe is a reference to James Thorpe of Coddington Hall, and both parks bear his name. The village has two pubs. This is the Inn on the Green, a restaurant with a public bar, formerly known as the Dice House Social Club. Before that, it was originally the farmhouse for Coddington's Manor Dairy Farm. Where Main Street crosses Beckingham Road, we can see the other pub, that's the Plough, which used to be known as the Plough Inn. The village stocks once stood near here too, outside the old vicarage, which is diagonally opposite the pub. Next door we have a house, which used to be something very different. That's an old bakery according to its nameplate. I can give you a bit more than that, it was not bakery according to the Coddington History Group website. So what we've done is we've crossed Beckingham Road and these roadworks are causing massive problems at the moment. It's a four-way control as well. 
so uh, yeah you can imagine a lot of traffic trying to fit through one little junction like this it's not going to work when roadworks are there so uh, thankfully it didn't hold me up too much when I drove through them myself but uh, I do feel for everyone who's in the queues at the moment right let's keep going on this southern part of Main Street, you can catch the local bus service. There are five buses which stop here. These are the 1, 1B, 22, 55 and W22. They all run to Newark, but the 22 and W22 will also get you to Grantham. Next we go up Chapel Lane. This is the former Wesleyan Methodist Chapel which was built in either 1827 or 1847, depending on which source you want to believe. This was converted into a residence in the late 1970s. Over the way we have All Saints Church. Originally a 13th and 14th century building, this was reconstructed in 1864. It's one of 17 Nottinghamshire churches listed in the book England's Thousand Best Churches by Simon Jenkins. The most notable grave in the churchyard is that of Constance Pensick Smith, who died in 1938. Smith was the founder of the movement that revived the observance of Mothering Sunday. There's a street named after her here too, Pensick Grove. So this is nice, a little row of trees on the approach to the church. There are, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, so I think there's 14 of them, seven on each side, I think. They're quite nice, aren't they? And of course we've got a rather extensive churchyard too, very colourful one as well. These cremation uh, graves here. Very well kept, I like it. Outside on the road is the church notice board and it seems there's plenty going on in the village. Now let's carry on down Main Street which becomes Brownlow's Hill and this is where a lot more of Coddington's amenities are. For starters we have not just one but two village halls. The one on the left is the original village hall which was an iron clad reading room built in 1885. The one on the right is Coronation Hall, which opened in 1954 on land that used to belong to the vicarage. Next to those is an old school. This was Coddington's National School, which was built in 1846. There's a newer school these days further down the hill, but this is still used by the local scout group, founded in 1938. And this is Post Office Row, a name which suggests that this is where Coddington's post office was once located. The village still has a pop-up post office located in its community centre, which opens for three hours a week every Thursday. It's worth mentioning at this point that over the other side of the road, there is a, a grand house of some description, but I can't get close to that. Um, if it's anything of note, I'll tell you in the next section. It turns out it was Coddington House, and I could get a little bit closer. However, there's not really much to tell you about it, if I'm being honest. Mind you, it's a nice house all the same. Now, we've seen the old school. Next, it's the modern one. This is Coddington C of E Primary and Nursery School, which was formally opened in 1964, although its construction began some eight years earlier in 1956. This caters for over 400 pupils, and there's an after-school club next door. Around the corner onto Beckingham Road, we find the Coddington Community Centre. An eco-friendly building, this was built in 2006. This serves as a venue for not just Coddington folk, but also people from Beacon Hill, a neighbouring Newark suburb. And that's where we find a parish notice board. I found several of these on my route. Markoff Coddington people were down to 34 in Newark and Sherwood. In all likelihood, this district will be completed next year. Now opposite the community centre, there's like a little rockery, little garden over here. I'll be passing that later because I've got to come out of this road here to walk back to where I started so I'll get up close and personal with that in a short while. For now I'm heading this way towards the A1 junction and I think this this is generally speaking going to be a little bit boring because basically it's going to be just the same as what you can see here just a, a road with trees and not much more on the, uh, the sides of it so uh, I'll see you when I get there. So here we are at the A1 junction. This stretch of the A1 bypass dates from 1964. When it was built, this bridge and junction was created and a new stretch of road, then known as the A17, ran to the base of Brownlow's Hill. 
the old Newark Road was bypassed and the junction arrangements left the end of it as a dead end. There are still a couple of properties left from pre-junction days. One of those is Greenfield's Care Home, which is marooned right in the middle of the junction. Some properties were demolished to make way, such as Catchem Inn Farm, which was a pub. Here we have what remains of the old Newark Road. Off this is the Thorpe Oaks Estate, built on land which once belonged to Coddington Hall. Before this estate existed though, this used to be the Harvey Avenue Estate, or Coddington Camp, built in the 1950s to house 150 families connected to nearby RAF stations, most notably RAF Winthorpe. There's not really a lot, really a lot to say about this area really, it's uh, just your standard area of new build housing I suppose. So uh, yeah, I'll... Uh, See you again in a moment on the playing field once I've got to the top of this street because there's a little footpath which you can use to access the playing field and the play area. When the Harvey Avenue estate became run down it was sold for redevelopment. Redeveloped as Thorpe Oaks, the names of planes and the surnames of servicemen from both world wars are used for its street names, upholding the RAF link to the area. As for Coddington Hall, that's been demolished. It stood where Beaconsfield Drive is today. It was requisitioned by the army in 1917, and in 1936 the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company had offices in it. By 1968 it was deemed structurally unsafe. Some of its materials were recycled in some of the other village's properties, however. Speaking of old buildings, as we make our way back to the small garden I mentioned earlier, we pass this building, the old parsonage. At that garden is a village sign, which according to this floor plaque was erected in 1994 to commemorate the centenary of Coddington Parish Council. However, as you can see, it's currently not here. I wonder why? Let's have a wander through this little garden then. It's not out of my way, so we can. Let's see what we've got. Obviously it's November, so all the plants here are looking a little bit worse for wear now. But I imagine in the summer, this looks pretty good. Looks like this is where Coddington put their Christmas tree. It's there, ready to be trimmed up in a uh, couple of weeks time. I'm not going to mention the C word just yet. There's a bench here, not dedicated to anybody. There's a, a sign, but I can't tell what that says. Something to do with recycling. I don't think it's anything important. In all, it's just a, a nice little corner of Coddington, this, more than anything else. So yeah, let's keep going. Beckingham Road is no longer known as the A17. The modern A17 runs to the north of Coddington and cuts through Drove Lane, the road which this footpath links us to. When you hit Drove Lane, you're almost back to the start. You'll pass the former Manor Dairy Farm on the corner of Drove Lane and the Green, whose outbuildings were converted to housing in 1986 to form the courtyard. And speaking of the Green, this is a delightful little area. This is sometimes known as Well Green. It's surrounded mainly by bungalows, and on the other side there's some lovely grand old houses. It also has a nice central green space. Coddington certainly isn't short of a few open green spaces, now is it? In fact, until 1959, Morgan's Close, which is adjacent to this and runs back to Thorpe Close, was a grass field on which a man named Fred Hollingworth once grazed his horses. The first families moved into the then newly built houses in 1960. And from here it's a walk down Morgan's Close back to where we began at the play area. And that is Coddington. Although we're not quite finished with it because once I reach the car and I've given you today's picture bit, I'm going to head down towards something called Pages Wood to finish this one off.
Okay, I don't think Pages Wood is much of interest if I'm being honest, but Google Maps marks it as a point of interest. So we'll just have a quick look around. I don't know what's in here. It just seems to be a wood to be fair. <laughs> but uh, you never know, there might be something lurking in these trees that I don't know anything about. So we'll just take a quick walk. I'll tell you something, even if there isn't anything in here, one thing you definitely are going to get if you come here is a fantastic view. Here we go. If I just stand here at the edge of this field, you'll see what I mean. How about that? That's worth it, isn't it? Even if there is nothing in these trees. But we'll, we'll just keep exploring for a, another sort of 30 seconds or so. It's not a very big wood, as woods go. It's not exactly Sherwood Forest. Um, so, um, you can't really get lost in here. We've got the road over there behind these trees, so you always know where there's a landmark if you do start to get a little bit disorientated. But to be honest with you, it's that small <laughs> that there isn't really anything to disorientate you. Let's go up here. I've just spotted a, a log or something which is unusual. <coughs> Not quite sure what it is. Uh, you know, not really much to be honest <laughs> okay I think we can concede that this is literally just a wood and nothing else I think I don't think there's anything else in here but never mind it's a uh, it's a good way to finish off the Coddington episode would you not agree to come to somewhere as peaceful as this I suppose and it is it is peaceful you've got the road but nothing much more than that and uh, you're surrounded by nature that has been the parish of Coddington and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. <laughs>